I'm so glad to be here. How many of y'all glad to be here? Huh? Yes, I'm glad to be here today. And I'm so thankful. Uh, today's title of my sermon is called Unlawful Hunger. That's a different title because I really believe this is a, a different word that God has given me. So the title of my sermon is called Unlawful Hunger. Um, Mark chapter 2, we're going to start reading in verse 23 down to 28. I'll be reading out of the NIV this morning. Thank you all for being here. Hallelujah. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and tell them, and say these words, I have an unlawful hunger this morning. Unlawful hunger. Come on. If y'all don't talk, it's time to talk. This is not school, and you don't go to detention. All right? I have an unlawful hunger. See, we don't think about this very often, but I want to remind you about some statistics that I took. In 2012, listen to this, 925 million people go to bed hungry every night. Now listen to me. I don't know about you, but I've done quite well with Christmas holidays. 925 million people go to bed hungry every night. 25,000 people daily die from hunger. Listen to this. Three-quarter percent of those deaths are children under the age of five. 25,000 people daily die of hunger, starvation, and three-quarters of the percentage of those people that die are children under the age of five. Now, that's a physical hunger. That is something physical, to be honest with you, that we as Elkhorn Baptist Church can help do. And a matter of fact, I'm just, just for a moment, all those who helped on Christmas Day at Least Famous Recipe, I want to publicly say this morning, live on the radio and live in this house today, thank you for feeding over 500 people in this community that day and making God the hands and the feet of this church. And I want to say thank you this morning. Y'all can do better. Stand to your feet this morning and give God praise and thank these people for serving the Lord that day on Christmas Day. Over 500 people got fed because we was not selfish that day. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much. See, here's the thing. We forget about how blessed we are. We forget about today that all of us probably will go home and eat something. But there will be people in this world today 925 million people will, will, will go to bed hungry tonight without a meal. And 25,000 of them will die, and three-quarters percent of those are children under the age of five. See, can I tell you, what if I told you this morning, that's a physical hunger, now let me talk about a spiritual hunger. Listen to me, it's a good word today. What if I told you God will do for you according to the hunger you have for Him? Listen to me. What if I told you God will do for you according to the hunger you have for Him? See, if you're not hungry, God can't feed you. <laughs> if you're not hungry, God cannot feed you. Listen, here's the thing. Anybody can be normal. Anybody can act normal. Anybody can do these things. Listen to me. But somebody at some point in their life, if they have been saved even longer than a day, they should say, I'm hungry for the Lord. And somewhere in your life, there must be a turning point in your life and say, I'm not hungry for the things that used to feed me. I'm not hungry for the things of this world. Matter of fact, I've got so much of God, the world is void in my life now. There's got to be something, an unction in your life that says, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I am starving. I am thirsty. I don't have enough of him. Hallelujah. I've got to be fed by the Lord. Amen? I'm hungry for the Lord. How many of you can say this morning, I am actually hungry, not for physical stuff, but I am so hungry for the spiritual things in my life. See, a fast will make you get away from the physical things in this world, things that used to feed you, and then all of a sudden you feel something rising in you, says, you know what, I'm hungry for more of God. I'm hungry for the Lord. Mark chapter 2, a very unique scripture, verse 23 through 28. Look, look at this. This is really good. Thank you, God, for giving me these words. Lord, less than me and more of you. Verse 23 of Mark chapter 2 says this. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the, the grain fields. This is a good word. And, and his disciples walked along, and they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look. Look, look, why are they doing this? 
what is unlawful, unlawful on the Sabbath. Listen to this. Everybody say unlawful. Verse 25. He answered, I love this. Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? It's a good word. In the days of Abitar, look at this, the high priest, he entered the house of God and he ate the consecrated bread. He ate Beth the showbread. And David was not a high priest. So it was unlawful for David to even be in the temple on that day of the Sabbath and eat the showbread. Listen to this. He said it's, uh, it's unlawful. And ate, he ate the consecrated bread. He ate the showbread, which is lawful only for the priests to eat. And he also gave some to his, oh, his companions, his co com company. Then he said to them, listen to this, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Let this word get in your spirit this morning. Because listen, what's happening to the churches today is that they've got rules and traditions and they've got laws and bylaws, but they're not on the Sabbath. They're not a godly standard. It's made for man and not for God. The law of today was not made for the ones who keep the law. It was made for the ones who break the law. So what God is saying is this. I want you to worship me, whether it be on the Sabbath or the first, just worship the Lord. That's what he's saying. He said these words. What's this? And he gave some to his command. And he said these words. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Mark chapter 2 is making a reference of, of 1 Samuel 21. And when you get home today, I'm going to challenge you to do a reference study of what I'm preaching on today because it's a true word. Mark 2 is making a reference of 1 Samuel chapter 21 about David. Listen to this. Saul was chasing David. Saul was wanting to kill David. Saul was after the man of God. Y'all remember? David was a man who, who committed adultery with Bathsheba while she had a husband named Uriah. You remember David was a man who killed Uriah. He lied and he, got, he killed this man. You remember David laid with Bathsheba the first time and their baby died. But the second time he done it right, he got married. He, he and Bathsheba got married, and all of a sudden, here comes Solomon. They call him king today. King Solomon, one of the wealthiest men in the Bible. Saul was trying to kill David. David was running for his life. Listen to this, day by day. And all of a sudden, David ran out of food. Let me teach just for a moment. David ran out of provision. David ran out of his supply. David was running out of energy. David was hiding and, and wanting to, to spare his life. All he could do, he couldn't eat. He ran out of provision. He ran out of his bread. He ran out of his drink. He ran out of everything he had. So all he could do was hide from Saul. Now, I want you all to listen to me. God gave me this word, and I was so excited. I'm still excited to preach it to you. It's like bowling into my spirit right now. So I'm trying to teach a little bit, but I like to preach a little bit too. You know what I'm saying? David hides from Saul. Look what he hides from Saul in 1 Samuel. He hides in a temple. Listen to me. See, a lot of people, when they get in trouble, they run to different things in their life. They run to back to some things that they're, they're used to. But David knew, listen to this, David knew the only way that he can get away from Saul is to go to church. Let that get in your spirit. See, a lot of people run from things in their life. They run from the drugs and the alcohol and all these things. But, and all of a sudden, they run back to those. But David said, if I run to the church house, if I run to the temple, if I hide from Saul, he'll never find me in church. He'll never find me in church. David, he said these rules. Listen to this. Listen to this. It's so good. All of a sudden, David gets inside the temple, and he's hiding from Saul, and he's in a corner. The lights are out. It's dark. Y'all with me? Say, I got you, preacher. Come on. You get, listen, if you don't get this first part of it, you're going to miss the whole sermon. If you're waiting for a hoorah, you're going to miss it all. Listen to me. He ran into the church. He ran into the temple. Saul passed him by. He didn't go into the house of worship. Because Listen to this. And all of a sudden, David was in a corner. The lights were out, and his belly started growling. It's a true story. Read your Bible. It's a good, good word. His belly started growling. And next thing you know, David looked down and he seen the showbread on the table. And he said, there's bread. But he knew the law. He knew the rules. He knew the religion. He knew the tradition. He could not eat the bread because only the high priest could eat it. So all of a sudden, David said, I've got to make a decision. 
I'm hungry. And I'm going to eat some bread. So this is telling me God's going to speak, speak to you. He reached down, belly growling, took the communion bread, took the show bread, and he ate it. All of a sudden, Avatar walked in. He said, David, 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 don't eat the bread. Don't eat the show bread. And all of a sudden, David said, this, I love this. He says, listen to me. He said, I know this is the house of worship. Listen to me. I know that I'm not supposed to eat of this bread, but it just don't make no sense to me that the bread is in the house and nobody can eat of it. What well, God spoke into my heart that this morning, Lynn Wisdom, the bread, the body of Jesus is in the house and only a few people are eating of it. Only a few people are partaking of the bread, the consecrated bread of God. I know what the rules say. I know what the law says. But the law was not made for me because I am a man of Jesus Christ. So if I am a man of God and the bread is in the house, why can't we worship him one more time? Isn't that amazing? That so many people are coming to church out of tradition and out of rules. And I have to. Mama made me. And Granny done it for all her life. And I know I got to be here. But what God spoke unto me in this last day, God is looking for men and God is looking for women and God is looking for teenagers to get an unlawful hunger. To get a hunger in you, I don't care who's sitting beside me, I'll raise my hands. I don't care if they talk about me. I don't care if they laugh at me. I don't care if I got my Bible in my book satchel. I don't care who's looking at me. I'll be the praiser on my pew. I'll stand up and give him praise. I'll be the one that gets hungry for him. I'll be the one to say, hey, amen, hallelujah, so be it, let it be. I'll be the unlawful hungry person. I'll be the one. Because I'm hungry for the Lord. I, the world don't satisfy me no more. Y'all getting this? The showbread is here. The bread is in the house. But people are leaving hungry. People are walking out, and here's what they'll say. Man, the preacher didn't preach. He didn't feed me today. Goo goo. Ga ga. You got fed when you was a baby. But if you can walk, it's time to quit crawling and walk. It's time to grab the showbread. Hey, it's time to eat the bread. It's time to grow up in the Lord. Somebody help me preach. It's time that the church grabs the bread, breaks the bread, partakes of it, and walk with the Lord. That's right. I don't care if you like it or not. That's good preaching. It's good preaching. Woo. See, here's what I found out. Hungry people become desperate people. Hungry people are desperate people. My God, help me preach Jesus. Whew. Hungry people, they'll walk in and they'll say, Oh my God, I feel the Lord. Hungry people are desperate people. Just feed me. Just let me get in the presence of Jesus Christ. See, David had an unlawful hunger. Listen to me. David, what I found out in the scripture, he was inside the church house. This is what God revealed to me. I don't know how he speaks to you, but this is what God revealed to me. David was inside the temple, the church, the house. His enemy ran past him. David ate the bread. Here's what God just gave me. So many people are seeing the bread. God's good. They're filling the bread, but they're not partaking of the bread. So many people come to church. They, they know God's here. They feel God. He's in the house. It's undeniable. People are being saved. Things are happening. We're growing by leaps and bounds, but they never eat the bread. They never taste the glory. It's the anointing of God, hallelujah, that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing of God that sweeps through his house and enters his people. That he rises up in you, I feel the Lord. It's the showbread. The bread represents the body. And God says, if you want me, you got to taste me. you gotta, you got to be with me. 
And you and God make two. And the Bible says where two or three come together touching and agreeing, whatever thing ye bind on earth, hallelujah, will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. All it takes is you and God, and you are a multitude, hallelujah. Amen. All it takes is you and God. Somebody praise his name. All it takes is you and God. It don't take 500. It just takes you and the Lord. And what God keeps telling me, there's so many people entering the house without an unlawful hunger, without being hungry, without becoming desperate. See, I, I'm desperate for God this morning. Matter of fact, I get irritable if I don't hear from the Lord. I, I, I'm being honest with you. It's not that I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm a, a, a little Jesus because I'm not. I'm just a Jesus freak. But I'm telling you, that I want more of him today than ever before. Oh, I know that people will look at you and say, oh, he's just old Pentecostal, and oh, he's all this and all that and this, that, and the other. Hey, whatever it takes, I'm going to find the presence of the Lord. I'll partake of the showbread. Let me ask you, are you hungry this morning? See, listen to me. If you want the bread, it's available. It's available. He's here. He's, it's available. See, it takes a passion. It takes a desperation. Amen. It takes a determination to get into the presence of God. I can't tell you how many times, pastor to friend and just man to man right now, I can't tell you how many times I personally in the flesh have said, I can't take no more. I am at my breaking moment. But I'm telling you, there's something in me called the Holy Ghost. There's something in me that's drawing me to that old cross. There's something in me that when I'm down, it's still standing. You know, watch this. That's a plus sign. That ain't a minus sign. God says if you come to that's a good word, right? If God comes, if you go to God, he'll add to you. He ain't going to be taken away from you. Even if, even if death is at your door. My God, you, I'm telling you, you'll spend more time in heaven with them than you will 70 years here on earth. Right. Right. Woo, preach that, white boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, hungry people become desperate people. Listen to this. And desperate people become field pe people. Hungry people, watch me write this down. Hungry people. Become desperate people. I'll do whatever it takes. I've got to find food. I've got to find bread. Even if I'm in the temple on a Sunday, on the Sabbath, I'll reach down and feed my hunger. Why do you think people do drugs? Oops. It's the truth. They got a hunger in them. Watch me. That'll wake them up at 3 o'clock in the morning with their mouth watering, and they got to get that high. They got to get that fixed. They got to get where it's at. Can I drop by this morning and tell you, I can wake up now. The Lord wakes me up at 2, 3, 4 o'clock. My mouth is watering. I, my eyes is all bugged out. I've got to get into the presence of the Lord. He's got to feed me. I've got to eat some bread this morning. Somebody say amen. I've got unlawful hunger in me. I know some of you say, Brian, I, boy, all you do is yell. I can't help it. Man, when you get a burning in you, that fire, there ain't no fire steam can put it out, amen. There ain't no person can put it out. Because I'm telling you, when you've been in the presence of God, he'll fire you up. He'll turn you on. He'll stand you up. He'll burn you up. He'll move you on. Somebody praise him. I know you say, Brian, you loud. I don't care this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thought about hungry people. I thought about hungry people, what they do and how they act. Y'all think about this. Think about somebody you met on a street corner who was begging for food. I started relating that, Daniel, to, to Christianity. See, the, what God gave me, what hungry people do and how they act. Hungry people aren't picky people. Hungry people aren't picky people. If a crumb falls off the table... They'll reach down 
and grab a crumb. It's like the old beggar in the Bible. He says, just give me a crumb. See, all it takes is a piece of bread. All it takes is a beginning. And if you've got the bread in you, the, the word, the body of Jesus in you, there will be a resurrection come in you. See, hungry people aren't picky people. And here's what I'm finding out. Some of the pickiest people I have ever seen in my life is Christians. Exactly. Look, y'all can sit and lie all you want to. But I'm preaching truth today. Some of the pickiest people I've ever seen in my life are Christians. Some of the meanest people I ever seen was Christians. See, I, I, th I started thinking about a hungry man. If a hungry man was seeking God, whew, the way he seeks food. If a hungry man walked in here and act like the bread was really God, how do you think he would be acting? I guarantee you, here's what I have seen in St. Louis. I know I was right in St. Louis in the Valley of it all. They'd come up to you. They didn't know who, they, who you were. They just said, hey, you got a dollar? I started thinking about how Christians, if they were really hungry and so out for God, it didn't matter who you were, where you were at, they would come up to you and say, hey, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Hey, do you know Jesus this morning? I feel that. See, they're not picky people. It don't matter what, what you wear. It don't matter what you look like. We need a church. And I thank God this morning, thank you, Elkhorn Baptist Church, that you are a church that people can come as they are, but they'll leave chains. Amen? Amen. We had a church today, red and yellow, black and white, whatever you got on, just come on. Do you know Jesus? <laughs> Woo! Do you know Jesus this morning? See, hungry people are not picky people. They wouldn't walk in here and go, Gray carpet. Red, what's that on the wall? They wouldn't. Boy, I'm preaching now. Y'all done got quiet. <laughs> Hungry people are not picky people. They'll just walk in and say, I found Jesus. Well, where's he at? I got to get to him. And along the way, they'll pass people and they'll say, Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? See, hungry people will get whatever they get. Hungry people will search until they find food. Have you ever noticed that? I'm gonna, I could stop right there and say amen. People get saved and we go home. But God gave me a word. Hungry people will search until they find bread. They'll do whatever it takes to find bread. They'll, they'll search, they'll climb, they'll find, they'll call, they'll beg, they'll do whatever it takes. Give me bread. I'm hungry this morning. And people will look at you and they'll call you evangelical. They'll call you, they'll call you Pentecostal. They'll call you charismatic. I'm preaching now. And they'll, they'll, they'll say, somebody who's hungry for God is not a normal person. They're, they're a Pentecostal. They're, they're evangelical. They raise their hands. But oh, this morning I felt God just compelling my spirit. David said inside the temple, inside the church, it was on the Sabbath day and only the priest could eat the bread. And David said, today I didn't come for a normal service. I come to find bread this morning. And I will reach down and take the bread and break it and eat it. Hungry people are desperate people. Desperate people become filled people. What are you hungry for this morning? Listen to me. Only you can answer this question. I wrote this down. How many of you are glad that we serve a buffet God? I just, that's why my mind thinks. I wrote this down. Man, I just started thinking about we serve a God who lays out the filet mignon. Ooh, my mouth is watering. <laughs> we serve a God that the buffet line, the table in heaven, goes on forever. Right. We serve a God that you just don't sit down and stand back up and say, I got enough, I'll be back tomorrow. We serve a God that's like a buffet. You come in, you eat of the bread, and you don't leave hungry. If you leave hungry here today, you didn't come in hungry for God. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah.
I thought about this too. We don't need no more desperate housewives. We need desperate Christians. We don't need no more desperate housewife and all this stuff going on. We need desperate Christians that walk through that door and say, Today, the buffet is open. Today, I'm going to eat some bread. Today, I'm not going to walk away hungry. Hey, because why? I got full because I got a buffet God. And there's, it, oh, this is good. God keeps feeding me. It's like, the, oh, watch this. And your bill's done been paid. Shoo! Oh, y'all getting this? Y'all wanting to pay? Well, I'll put more in my tithe. I'll work harder at church. I'll do this. I'll do that. You're trying to buy your way in, and you've already been purchased by the blood, by the Lamb of Jesus Christ. You've already got whatever it takes to keep going on for God. Amen? Somebody praise the Lord. You've already been bought and purchased. Hallelujah. Some of you are looking at me like, that boy didn't take his riddling. I'm not taking it next week either. In the week after. In the week after. In the week after. So all I can tell you to do is if you want some J-E-S-U-S, and you want some buffet food where filet mignon's been served, come in hungry, and I'm telling you God will fill you because you came in desperate looking for bread. That's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> I thought about McDonald's. I love this. I thought about McDonald's. I go to McDonald's quite often. I get a Big Mac, a fry, and a large Diet Coke. Y'all go ahead and laugh. You say, you might as well get a regular Diet Coke, a regular Coke you know? That's what my wife says, but I'm like, Dana, but I can, I, listen, I can eat half of a Big Mac more because I saved 230 calories. That's the way my mind... I know y'all don't act like it, but I do. So I go, up, I go up there in my truck and I say, welcome to McDonald's. How can I help you? And I say, I'm glad you asked. I want a Big Mac. I want a fry. And I want a large Diet Coke. And she says, sir, can I ask you one more question? Do you want to supersize that? <laughs> I started thinking about this. Billy, this is good. I started thinking about McDonald's. Ask me, do I want to supersize my stuff? And I'm sitting there going, yeah, I believe I will. <laughs> and I don't even ask how much it cost. This is going somewhere. I know y'all looking like, I don't ask how much it cost. I just want to supersize. Can I tell you this morning, hallelujah, blessed be the name of God. We got a God that wants to supersize your order. We got a God that when you drive up, he don't say, hey, do you want to supersize? He's already supersized. He's already got you in the palm of his hand. So, Elkhorn, are you hungry? Now, I didn't ask you to get up and run the aisles and speak in tongues. Listen to me. But here's what I will tell you. I'm, I, will, I will speak truth to you this morning. The Bible is the Bible. Listen to me. Let me. I want to clarify because, listen, this is the truth. We don't have the power to tell God that his gifts have stopped. We don't have the power to tell God what he can do and when he can do it and where he can do it at. I'm preaching now. The Bible is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What was good for Father Abraham is good for Father Brian. He's the same all the time. Somebody praise him. He's the same. He don't change. He don't change. We got denominations don't even preach the Bible. We got people that says, I don't like that. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, tear, tear that page out of your Bible. And then I say, well, the Bible says do not take, to take or add or take away. or, Well, you don't believe in it, so take it out. <laughs> See, what bothers me is that we're looking for a radical movement of God, but we're, but we're unwilling to be radically moved by God. Oh, that's a good word. My God, thank you, Holy Spirit. See, God is wanting, and He will, watch this, He will touch the church once again. 
The Bible says in, in Joel chapter 2 and in Acts chapter 2 that in the last days, God will pour out his spirit on all mankind. Your daughters and your sons and your mamas and your daddies will dream dreams that nobody else can dream. They will prophesy in my name. See, we, we say we believe the Bible until it comes to the church. And when it comes to the church, we want to dictate what happens and what we believe and what we do not believe. The Bible, the Word of God, is not up for vote. It's true. Here's what I submit to you today. The buffet's open. There was an unlawful hunger that David was inside the church, inside the temple. Read it. First Samuel ch chapter 21. Read it. His belly started growling. And he said, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I'm going to eat the bread. Listen to him. Y'all got me say amen. Come on. The praise team, y'all come. You come. Listen to me. If you're not hungry, God can't feed you. God does not force feed his people. When you become at the age of maturity, accountability in your life, God says there must be a time in your life that he quits spoon feeding you and you go from the milk to the meat. Can I tell you today under the unction of God, the bread is here. I wrote this down. You know what a Christian is? Listen to me. You know what a, a true Christian is? It is one beggar telling another beggar where they can find the bread. It's me telling you. And you telling me. And us telling the other people where they can find the bread. If there's so many laws and so many rules in a church, it will, I'm telling you the truth, it will smother you. And praise be unto God. You're at a church today that believes in the bread. We believe that the bread is available. Isn't it sad? Oh, God just gave me. Thank golly. Mm. You know why some people can be in church and you can be sitting beside people, and one person will receive a miracle, but the other one don't. Have y'all ever wondered that? How some people can be healed, and some people's not? Here's what I really believe after reading this text. The bread's available, but that person may not come hungry. The reason why some people can be sitting in this church, and some people can receive a miracle, and some people don't, it's because I really believe, according to Scripture, you got to be hungry. you got to be hungry. Instead, what churches have become very good at is being critical. Whoa. It's truth. I know the Lord's working now. I can feel Him. They sit back. Come on. And they start questioning the authority of God. Well, Lord, why did you do it for them, but you didn't do it for me? And God will say these words because you came, you didn't come hungry. See, I am so desperate. I believe in the Word of God. If you're sick in your body, I will lay hands upon you. I will anoint you with oil, and I will cast that devil out of your life, and I will call you healed. I believe that. There was a man here today. See, y'all think what we do is a joke. A lot of people do. I want to show y'all something. Stand up, sir, in the very back. Y'all watch this. I, I, I just met this man today, today, earlier this morning, didn't I? Pat. This man, I want you to tell them, because I don't want to put words in your mouth, but why did you come today? Because I heard you on the radio. Okay, but so, don't, that's no good. But like, um, <laughs> listen, yeah, just, it is. Too. Got, tell them what you told me. You said that I'm at home, and I can feel it what? I can feel it move. I can feel it. Make you squirm on your couch. <laughs> You're preaching. This man, listen to this. It's here today because of what God is doing in this house. 
it drew him, it drawed him from his couch to a blue seat in this church this morning. God bless you. We love you. Watch this. I want to pray over you right now. This man has second stage cancer. Don't y'all listen to me. They can turn the radio off. They want to. I don't care about the radio. They can turn the cameras off. I don't, I'm not here for a popularity contest. This man needs a healing. And I'm going to pray this morning under the unction of God. And if you don't believe it, you stay in your seat. Don't you dare get up and put hands on somebody if you're sitting there going, well, I don't know if it works or not. I know it works. So we're going to pray. And we're going to bind that old, that old spirit. Listen, cancer's not, it, cancer's not what kills people. Satan is. Amen. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I want you to look around just for a moment. This, these people right here, yeah. hallelujah, this, this is good. Yeah. See, you're not here. I, I, I thank you for listening to the radio. I love you. I don't even know your, what's your name again? Avery Vinsky. Avery. Thank you for listening to the radio. But I believe right now you're really here for a healing. God loves you that much. I want to lay hands upon you this morning. Has anybody got any oil on them? Oh, wow. Well. You ask and you shall receive. We know that there's no power in this oil, but there is power in agreement. All these people believe today that when we anoint you and pray and believe, you're going to be healed. All you got to do is believe it and walk it out. So today, when I, before I even pray for you, do you believe that God can heal you? Oh yes. Watch this. I'm going to go deeper. Do you believe even before I pray for you right now, God's going to heal you today? Come on. Listen. Right? Listen. Perfect teaching. Listen to me. This is a perfect teaching lesson. I've been where he's at. Did you notice I said, do you believe that God can heal you? And he didn't answer. So here's why I will tell you how the power of God works. If you don't believe it, it's not going to work. So I'm going to pray, God, help his unbelief. You got me? You see what I'm doing? You see, I believe you got to work this stuff. I don't believe I can just come back here and lay my hands on you, and if you don't believe, you're, whoa, I'm healed. No. Yeah. Faith come by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, help his unbelief. Yes. Avery, I want you to say these words. Say, God, God. help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Yes, Lord. I want to believe today, I want to believe today. that I am healed. Jesus' name. Avery, I believe this is the beginning of your healing. I believe every second, every minute of every hour, you're gonna, your body will start amending. What I mean by that is this. The centurion's son was at home, and he was far off from his son. God didn't heal that son automatically. But as his father was going back home, the Bible says his son's body started amending, getting better. So I believe in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Your body is amending right now. Cancer, we bind you by the authority of God. We call you out. I plead the blood of God over his life. Lord, you said in the Bible, that God, you would heal us. I am begging, I am pleading. Lord, we are binding this old spirit and we loose your healing power in his life. Cancer, come out now. Come on, church, help me. In the name of Jesus. God, even as I'm praying right now, let his face start, start arising. Lord, I thank you for this man. I thank you, God. He, he said he just turned the radio station over and it was on. But God, you drew him to this house today. 
God, by the name of Jesus, I know you're bigger than a radio station. So God, he is here to be healed. So God, today, in the name of Jesus, and every, every day, say, God, thank you for healing me. Thank you for healing me. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I love you. We love you. I mean this. Every day, you're getting better. All right? I hope we didn't scare you. You ain't scared me. I ain't scared you. I can see Jesus in your eyes, man. Thank you for, he come in today and he said, thank y'all for being a church that still preaches the Bible and believes in healing. So guys, today, you've seen a miracle. We love you. In honor of God, in honor of this man, let's give God a hand clap. Amen. Thank you. So guys, here we go. Yeah, I just heard that. Someone said, I hope you start getting better. He said, I'm already getting better. So he's got it. See what I'm saying? Elkhorn, y'all watch me. You got to speak faith. Faith, 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 faith. Isn't it amazing? You ask God to come into your heart and save your soul, but you've never seen him, but you believe you're saved. And how much easier it is for God to heal you. Believe. So I'm believing right now that God is doing something, whatever he wants. Are you hungry? Maybe somebody, listen to maybe you, maybe your fire's burned out. Maybe you're not on fire like you once was. Adults, maybe you're, you don't feel God like you once did. Maybe you've lost your hunger. Maybe you're just sitting there this morning and you're going through the motions. I've done that. Watch this. That's easy to do. Christians are cons too. Oh, you look good. You smell good. Sunday, praise God. You took a bath. If you didn't, please do. But you're sitting there this morning. You're not hungry like you once was. You've lost that fire. You've lost that zeal. You're not the man of God you once was. You're not the woman of God that you really desire to be. Can I tell you this morning, the bread's in the house. Bread's in the house. So watch this. Come get it. He's waiting for you. You've got to have an unlawful hunger. I don't care who's watching. I don't care what they say. I don't care how silly I look jumping up and down. Because when I feel the Holy Ghost, I'm going to jump. I don't feel, I don't care what it looks like. When I start running, I feel the Lord when I run. I raise my hands when I feel the Lord. Or I'll just sit there and get fed. Don't get caught up in an emotion. Make sure it's led by God. Jeremy, the buffet's open. The buffet's open. The buffet's open. But you got to be hungry before God can feed you. Y'all stand to your feet.